Hey guys, Koki here. With everyone starting to slowly dive into Xander Zone Zero's endgame content, shield defense, where HP sponges starts to become more and more prevalent, it's time for me to touch on how you can optimize drive this investments, which is arguably one of the key determinants on whether you have enough stats to pass the endgame DPS checks. First up, drive this setups in Xenozone Zeros are generally straightforward. Each unit can equip up to 6 drive discs, and each drive disc set has a 2 piece bonus and a 4 piece bonus respectively. The most common and optimal setup is to have a 4 2 setup to utilize 1 4 piece bonus effect and 2 2 piece bonus effects. However, when you first unlock drive disc farming methods, you can utilize a 2 2 2 setup that is much easier to fulfill before you transition from it eventually. In general, I would recommend the following drive this sets depending on the unit's role, but note that the set selection is highly dependent on team compositions. For attacker units, I would recommend for the 4 piece elemental set outside of the ice attackers that would want to use woodpecker electro set instead, as the ice set 4 piece effect is relatively weak. The remaining 2 pieces can go for either the woodpecker electro 2 piece set, as the 8% crit is pretty substantial, or if you are already using the 4 piece with Packer Electro set, you can go for a Puffer Electro for the penetration rate. For Stunners, 4 piece set is always going to be Shock Star Disco for the Daze Multiplier with a 2 piece Swing Jazz for the Energy Reject. For Anomaly units, 4 piece Elemental set slash Freedom Blue is great, and the 2 piece set can be either the Elemental set or the Freedom Blue set. For the supports, I would go for a 4 piece Swing Jazz for the non Anomaly team supports, and a 4 piece Freedom Blue for an Anomaly team support. Do note here that Freedom Blue cannot be stacked, so only one unit in the team should carry the 4 piece set. Now, the 2 piece set for the supports can be selected from either the Swing Jazz for the Energy Regen or the Freedom Blue for Anomaly teams whereby you want to build more anomaly proficiency for the non-attacker buffers. For those attacker buffers such as like Lucy or Sokaku that rely on attack percentage to increase the amount of buffs they give to the teammates, you will definitely want to go for Hormone Punk for the attack percent. Now before I go further into the optimization of leveling drive this and the main stat substat selection, it is important for me to touch on the various avenues you can farm drive this and the best strategy to balance this farming methods. Drive this comes in 3 rarities, the B, A and S ranks and you'll only get access to S ranks after level 35. With that said, the first method of farming is through the routine cleanup challenge where we'll spend 60 stamina to obtain 1 to 2 higher rarity drive this and 3 to 4 lower rarity to you once. The exact sets they are going to get are random from a selected 2 sets based on which stage you select to tackle for the routine cleanup challenge. Now the second method you can obtain drive this is going to be from the music store where you will use the audio boosters or what we call the tuners to obtain drive this. For this music store you can select the set you want and it has a 5 PT system where every 15 will going to get you a guaranteed higher rank drive this. The best strategy with that set is going to be for for people to only use the music store to acquire drive this before internal level 35 and only start farming routine cleanups after hitting level 35. Your initial aim is going to be to get your core team sorted out with either a 4-2 setup or a 2-2-2 setup and then you are going to move on. This is simply because the routine cleanup is very much a bait at the start since you only obtain mostly B rank drive this and A rank drive this at best with one of two possible sets. So it's extremely RNG dependent and you also have to spend 60 stamina not to mention the B rank drive this that you're going to get a lot of from this is for the most part not worth investing in nor will you desperately need to invest in them based on personal experience. You do not need this before level 35 so the difficulty of the content actually doesn't justify you farming for the drive this. Once you unlock the second difficulty of routine cleanup at level 35, it will then grant you 1 to 2 S rank drive this and 3 to 4 A rank drive this, making a much better investment of your stamina, but still do note that you don't want to excessively farm it since there are other aspects that you can upgrade for your characters. On the other hand, even before level 35, the music store is going to be great since after 35, the further upgrades of the music store only upgrades the functionality of selecting specific slots while costing more tuners but it doesn't allow you to upgrade the basic tuners to the intermediate ones so it's, there's little benefit for you to save this early on. My general recommendations after you unlock the intermediate tuning is for you to utilize the basic tunes for your support sets since supports are generally less stat dependent and the intermediate tunes where you are able to get the S rank and the A ranks you are going to want to use it for your DPS and your 
Astana sets since they really rely on stats a lot to cut down the clear types. Now that you know how and when to start farming drive this, I think leveling them optimally is also just as important. As you can see on the screen for yourself, I've broken down the EXP it takes for you to level up A rank and S rank drive this and the respective refund values that you will get if you were to dismantle them. You can clearly see how the plus 12 to plus 15 represents almost a 2 times EXP jump for the S ranks. Therefore, I would recommend most people to stop at plus 12 for the start because from my personal experience with the drive this EXP that we get as a free to play player, you are only going to have enough EXP to get 8 to 10 pieces of plus 12 before you run completely dry unless you were to go and farm specifically the drive this EXP that I do not recommend over farming. I think a few times is going to be fine but this does not give you any new drive this and especially at the start when you do not even have good drive this with the correct main stats, it's much better to go for the routine cleanup challenge. Now another way you can obtain drive this EXP is through dismantling your drive this. Note here, if you were to dismantle your drive disc, it will give you a 80% plus base EXP refund depending on the rarity with the S ranks being the 500 base EXP, A ranks being the 200 EXP and then the B ranks are going to give you 100 EXP. Dismantling this drive disc for EXP is extremely viable and they do not cost you any dennies if you were to dismantle them at level 0. However, it will start to cost you a good chunk of dennies and dennies are quite precious so it will cost you a lot at the later level so please do not assume Assume that you always have this 80% EXP refund to rely on and this will warrant random investments which I truly think it is a mistake. Therefore, I recommend only upgrading the drive this at the start to plus 12 for your 2 DPS units. It's just enough for 2 DPS units for the 2 different teams that you intend to bring to shield defense and only upgrade the slots 2, slots 4, slots 5 and slot 6 provided they are of a beneficial offensive main stat. To understand why I say that you only want to invest in these slots, I will now break down how main stat works as well as the optimal selections when it comes to your drive disc. Slots 1 to 3 are fixed in the main stats as you can see, it only gives you HP, attack and defense while slots 4 to 6 have the variable roles as shown on the screen. Now since slot 1 and 3 are fixed HP and defend main stats which are generally just defense stats right outside of the defense scaling units, you want to leave them unenhanced and this is going to be the best early on given the limited AXP and how you want to focus mainly on reducing your clear time in shield defense. As for the optimal main stats to look out for on your slots 4, 5 and 6, once again these are going to be my recommendations based on the rules. Attacker units should aim for max DPS and this means that you always want either crit rate or crit damage on your slot 4, elemental damage percentage on your slot 5 and attack percentage on your slot 6. Now for your stunners, the main thing you want to look out for is going to be impact percent because their role is to daze the enemies and doing so will help you daze them faster and I also see stunners generally as a sub DPS of sorts so I will aim for the crit rate or crit damage on slot 4, elemental percentage on slot 5 and the impact percent on slot 6. For anomaly units, as the name suggests, you really need as much anomaly proficiency and mastery that you can get so you definitely want to aim for anomaly proficiency on slot 4, elemental percentage on slot 5 and then anomaly mastery percentage on slot 6. Now for your supports, it is rather flexible but the attacker buffers really one attack percentage such as the Lucy and the Sokaku like I've mentioned. Energy regen on slot 6 is also great since they are often not on the field and this will help out a lot. Lastly, not forgetting our defense units i.e. it's just ban at the moment, you just want to go for defense percentage but ban in particular can actually use impact percentage as his slot 6 because his skills does have a relatively high days multiplier. Now at this point I also like to specially mention two other things of note and the first one is that if you want to get a matching elemental percentage on your slot 5, it's going to be quite difficult so if you were to get attack percentage on this slot, I think it's totally fine until later on where you want to replace them. And then secondly right, between the crit rate and crit damage on your slot 4, the simple rule is to look at the weapon you are using for the specific DPS. If you have a weapon that already adds crit rate, go for crit damage. Generally speaking right, free to play players will benefit fit more from going for the crit rate as your unit starts with 5% base crit rate and 50% base crit damage and the optimal ratio right is already off because the optimal ratio is 1 is to 2 crit rate to crit damage ratio and the S rank weapons are usually the ones with crit rate so free to play players really do not have much luxury to obtain crit rate. Now moving on to the substats roles there are a couple of things to note before we touch on the ideal substats to go for. The first one being that there are a max of 4 substat lines on a single drive 
with this piece and you will also not be able to have duplicate lines of the same substat on a single drive disc so you can't for instance get two quick read lines on your single piece. The second thing is going to be the upgrading of your drive disc. Every three levels that you upgrade a drive disc, it will net you either a new subset line if there are less than four subset lines or it's going to upgrade a random existing subset line. Now the third thing is going to be the substat you can roll for is going to be the exact same regardless of the drive disc slot and for the possible substats rolls with their respective stat values you can see it on the screen for yourself. Now next, the number of substats you start with will depend on the rank of the drive disc as shown on the screen. So generally speaking, you want to have as many lines as possible to start with so that you can have the max amount of upgrades. Of course, each upgrade also means that you're going to have a multiplicative of the base stats. So entirely RNG, but starting with the most lines are going to technically give you the best odds. Now a good thing in Zenla Zone 0 about substats is that all of their roles are actually fixed and they are just like the main stat roles. So all you have to do is to obtain the right substat and you are pretty much set, no RNG involved there. Lastly, substat values cannot be the same as the main stat of the drive disk. So using an example like where you have a normally proficiency main stat on your slot 4 drive disk for instance, you will never be able to roll on this piece a normally proficiency on the substat section. Now with all of that out of the way, I'm now going to give you my recommendation for the substats that you want to look for. Firstly, for your attackers and also the anomaly units that you are going for like a mixed damage, you will prioritize going for crit rate and crit damage, followed by attack percentage, penetration rate and lastly flat attack. Now for your pure anomaly DPS slash disorder teams, you will prioritize getting the anomaly proficiency, attack percentage, penetration percent and also the flat attack. Note here the reason why we are not going for crit is because the anomaly damage cannot crit which is why we do not go for them in the subset section in general. Now for your stunners and your supports, I think that going for attack percent overall is going to be much better especially since you can then pass the drive this set around and then you constantly upgrade and pass it around since the attack percent is always going to be wanted on your attack buffer such as the Lucy and the Sokaku and then other supports can also benefit from it generally. Now of course lastly we have our defense units which is banned and they want to just go for defense percentage overall. Lastly to briefly summarize the general progression path for your drive disc, first you want to aim for a 2-2-2 setup or a 4-2 setup when you first unlock your drive disc. Next you want to replace your lower rank drive disc with higher rank ones and you also want to aim for beneficial main stat rolls on your slots 4, 5 and 6. After that, you want to aim for beneficial substat natural rolls and then you want to upgrade them to plus 12 on your DPS units. Eventually, you want to go for plus 15 on your good pieces and you also want to recycle the bad pieces if they hit 2 or 3 bad upgrades until you get your desired substats. Now, I hope this guide has helped you guys but if you are interested in some beginner tips instead, be sure to check out this video over here. I'll see you guys over there. This is Gachas signing off.